before we start the question. And then some of you may have heard this, but it's a really great poem, and I, want, I thought maybe we might end the, the talk in a nice way. It's called The Most Beautiful Flower. The park bench was deserted as I sat down to read beneath the long, straggly branches of an old willow tree. Disillusioned by life, with good reason to frown, for the world was intent on dragging me down. If that weren't enough to ruin my day, a young boy, out of breath, approached me, all tired from play. He stood right before me, with his head tilted down, and said with great excitement, Look what I found. In his hand was a flower, and what a pitiful sight. With his petals all worn, not enough rain, too little light. Wanting to take his dead flower and go off to play, I faked a small smile, then shifted away. Then instead of retreating, he sat next to my side, and placed the flower to his nose, and declared with overactive surprise, It sure smells pretty, and it's beautiful too. That's why I picked it. Here, it's for you. The weed before me was dying or dead, not vibrance of colors, orange, yellow, or red. But I knew I must take it, or he might never leave. So I reached for the flower and replied, just what I need. But instead of placing the flower in my hand, he held it midair without reason or plan. It was then that I noticed for the very first time that wee toady boy could not see. He was blind. I heard my voice quiver, tears shone like the sun, as I thanked him for picking the very best one. You're welcome, he smiled, and then ran off to play, unaware of the impact he had on my day. I sat there and wondered how he managed to see a self-pitying man beneath an old willow tree. How did he know of my self-indulgent plight? Perhaps from his heart he had been blessed with true sight. Through the eyes of a blind child, at last I could see the problem was not with the world, the problem was me. And for all those times I myself had been blind, I vowed to see the beauty of life and appreciate every second that's mine. And then I held that wilted flower up to my nose and breathed in the fragrance of a beautiful rose. And smiled as I watched that young boy, another weed in his hand, about to change the life of an unsuspecting old man. Thank you. Anybody want questions? Yeah. Um, what are your thoughts on genetically enhanced meat and vegetables? GMOs? Not a big fan. See, my, my, I'm going to come down here. My, my philosophy, um, and this doesn't have to be yours, is that um, nature knows best. Right? Uh, I think man sometimes in his arrogance can can think he can do better than that. Uh, so I would prefer, because, you know, they've never been tested properly or not. Uh, sure looks good for Monsanto's bottom line, but uh, not necessarily what I would want to feed my family. So my opinion is, is to go is more post, get to nature, basically. So do you lean towards more towards a vegan diet or a hundred mile diet? Now, here's, or? here's my thought on that. Now, that's an excellent question. Um, as hunter-gatherers, What's that? The, sorry, the question was, do I lean more towards a vegan diet um, or do I eat meat? Um, scientifically, man was designed to be an omnivore, which means meat and vegetation. The problem is, the meat today, uh, the meat back then, wasn't pumped full of steroids and antibiotics and that fattened with grain and sat in a stall that didn't allow them to move, right? We ate, um, so I'm a big fan of the organic grass-fed type of meats, if you are going to eat meat. Um, but certainly there's not enough emphasis on eating the fruits and vegetables for sure. But, uh, so I do eat meat, but I, may, I purchase mine uh, from an organic or grass-fed more, again, like well, the way we ate when we were hunter-gatherers. We hunted, fish, we got, what? Fish, like mercury. And fish, fish, well, yeah, see I avoid that too because of what we're doing through our lakes. But it's not the fish's fault because we did we fish back then as well. Okay, so in, in order to get, I mean, one of the best sources of essential fatty acids are omega-3s, which are really, everybody should be on a daily um, supplement of that, um, is from fish, okay? So um, I get a, you know, I get a supplement that has the same ratio as it was in nature and it's purified without having mercury and contaminants with it. So thank you. That's a great question. Yeah? If there's a situation where you know it stresses you out, for example, deadline. Um, yeah. you know 
they do always get stressed out. Is there something physically that you can do to, like, it sounds like everything stress is physiological, right? Is there something that you can do to get rid of that somehow, or is it just a matter of yes. the sub vocalization? So, okay, one thing at a time, calm down. Or is yeah. That, How many people have heard of the term emotional intelligence? Okay, I, first of all, just so you guys know, I, I run a lifestyle program out of my office. If you're interested, I've got some information up here that you can look up. The Think Well portion of my program looks in providing you the skill set. And basically, you have an EQ and an IQ. EQ is an emotional quotient, right? In such a situation like that, it, you, there are certain strategies and skills that you can learn and practice to help you get through those times, and it's, it's based on the whole concept of emotional intelligence. There are five aspects to emotional intelligence. Um, one is your ability to self-regulate. The first foundation one is self-awareness. First, you've got to be aware of how the stress is affecting you. Then you've got to be, uh, have the ability to self-regulate. Then uh, the third aspect is intrinsic motivation, meaning are you performing something beyond just status and money? Okay, there's, a, there's an inspiration, there's a purpose for your life. Um, two, do you have the empathetic skills and the social skills to have interpersonal relationships with those at work, those of your family? Meaning, are you bringing the jackass home to your family after a hard day at work, right? Because you certainly don't want to contaminate that aspect of your life too, don't you, right? So yes, there's absolutely skills and strategies. I mean, I won't go too deeply in how we do that in, in our program, but absolutely, absolutely yes. Uh, exercise is a great way to dissipate that. You know, exercise after a hard day, before going home, then you won't yell at your husband. Yeah? From, from your philosophy and medically, how do you reconcile where people who do not everything, but everything right, much more than other people, these tragic endings, the cancer, the heat and all their life, they have cancer, chip, they die of a heart attack. How do, you, how do you reconcile that with your philosophy and your training? Are you saying they've done everything before they contracted the can to cancer? Uh, you know, Jim, Jim Fitz, his father died young, has a heart attack, and then he becomes a marathon runner in 40 years. Okay, first of all, I get that story a lot. Marathon runners are actually um, more susceptible to cancer and heart, a heart attack because the amount of um, free radicals they produce when they exercise, and if they don't get enough of the antioxidants to counteract that, that's it. But it's not the equation of all okay. the people. Yeah. You know what? It's all about putting the odds and probabilities in your favor. Does it happen? Absolutely. So how do I reconcile it in my head? I just say, you know what? I got to do. I know that these things. You got, first of all, you got to look at it from a very holistic point of view. Okay, we can't just say it was diet was great and it was exercise. If you had a really crappy emotional or mental well-being, then it's like, here's, here's what I would say. Um, the health of the plant requires sunlight, yes, water, and good soil. You can't have two out of the three, right? And expect the, the plant to still be healthy, right? So you got to still look at it from a holistic point of view. There may be other reasons. I have no idea what their the, the health background is. I certainly can the analytical type. I want to know why. But in terms of does it eat away at me? No. No, I just know that I have to put the odds and the probabilities in my favor. So that's kind of how I would reconcile it. You've got to do the best you can. Can you still get cancer? Sure. Anything's possible. Look at the environmental pollution and the environmental factors that, are, that we can't control. There are some things you cannot control. But you want to take charge of the ones you can. Yes? But great question. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Any other ones you can take? Out. Okay. Yeah, we've got to move to the next one. Thank you very much.